Here's another video of some failing stuff that I was talking about, and this is uh, part four. Uh, this here is that piece of for your window wipers, which is uh, one wiper goes about here and one wiper goes there, and this is where your re window winder regulators go. Now, remember how I was telling you about that piece, the rear four quarter. Well, here's the damage, and here's the piece, and that's what you can see from uh, the cutout and that's all this um, rubbery shit that's um, helped hold shit in place. There's panels here that have been cut out and they've probably been cut really really bad and here's a way that I wanted to develop my skills except I don't want to touch anything because a lot of things here have been prepped and ready to go back on the car and if I touch them like this piece here is a bit of a hole I don't like it but I have to deal with it and I don't want to damage it. Just like this piece here this is I've, I've tried to straighten this out really really well and I thought about it, if I weld this in place, I'm going to burn all my paint away that I've gotten in protecting it. So, what I've got on there is primer, I believe, and a lot of putty. And this isn't perfect, but it's pretty darn close. I put a lot of time into this, like hours and hours of time, trying to make that smooth and flat. And all the shiny spots here that you see are the high spots where the bog won't go below. It, it just sits there and the bog goes lower, or well, those points stay high. Same over there, but well, we'll talk about that another day. Or maybe when it comes down, when I'll start doing it. These pieces of metal, pieces of metal, were for the sheet metal work of the ZL Fairlane. The piece here has been cut out. ZL Fairlane, as you can see. I still have bits and pieces, and there's pieces above our heads. Not sure if any of those are vacuum lines. I'm wanting to show you them, but uh, it's just unfortunate I can't. I've got a mess. I've got a lot of cleaning to do, but there's a wind guard for your window for the driver. So if he wants to wind out his window, he can uh, do that without any issues. I'm feeling out of breath too easily. And that's the center console. That is the uh, gauges where you have all your vacuum lines. Your vacuum lines go there and there, and a bit of electrical there as well. And on top of that here is another cupboard with a bunch of parts in it for the fair lane and a little bit for the tritons. There's my brake booster, it's rusty as all crap. Here's a window uh, winder regulator for the um, doors. Here's the tool converter. Here's one of those latches that I had to rebuild and fix. And the reason being is because these broke on the car. This is what jams are. Internally, they rust. Internally, of in, on these components, they rust. So you have to pull these off the car. You have to pull them apart with screwdrivers and prime apart. As you can see, there's a little bit of damage there. But you prime apart, and then you... Uh, clean them up on the inside because as you can see there's a bit of rust there. I used penetrine and a bunch of um, lubricants to try and lubricate this and get it nice and fresh again. And this is um, moving. Now if I get a screwdriver or something here, that's its lock position. It can't um, go any further than that. It can't pull out or anything. Then when I press this uh, up, which it's it's his normal position. When you go to open the door, that's when this latch piece here will freely go push out like so and go to a nice position. I don't know if I heard something drop out of this onto the ground, but I heard something other than that. Uh, these, this is a cable holder for the spark leads. That I think is like a hose or something for the car, might be. Yep, that's a hose for the car. I don't know what that is though. Unfortunately, there's a lot of stuff I don't know anymore, but most of my car parts are in here now, lots of them. I think there's a dash cluster in there, there's a bunch of carpets. I'm not going to worry about the cupboard, I'm running out of breath already. It's like I'm very unhealthy at the moment from all the stress. There's some components in here, most components in here, like the, the speakers and all the stuff. There's a speaker that's broken or missing, I don't know, it's there, yeah, I think one's in there. I don't see the others. And here is one of your... um armatures. One that you unscrew, there's three screws, one, two, three, and this is what I had to pull off my car to get the door trim off from my screw I told you about. There's spare, spare headlights. If I go to this cupboard here, I think there's a few bits in here, not much. Fucking all this crap in the way. Pardon me. No, there's no components in there. But that's uh, most of the stuff for this car, the Fairlane. And here's all the other stuff for the Fairlane. I'm thinking to myself about this video right now, and I feel like this is the last video 
because there's not really much left to talk about with the car other than things that might not have been talked about. Like there's screws, it's all been organized as well as possible and it all comes out of this car and there's a lot of work involved with it. So I feel like today we're gonna finish this video up and we're going to reveal the engine. This is part four. Part five, I might end up having a six to talk about the car, but this is all just showing you bits and pieces of the car and not necessarily everything to do with the car, but this is a lot of stuff to do with the car. I like the Snowflake Gyro rims, by the way. If you haven't noticed already, I broke the rear one. I actually did break that one, that one's damaged. Don't know how it's damaged, but damaged. I want new wheel nuts as well. I want to keep them in nice, clean, brand new condition. So today we're actually going to do, right now, or soon, uh, I'm going to take the tarp off the engine now. This to me is a unique engine because there's not many engines that look like this. I don't have my glasses on. And great. Here we go. One six cylinder inline EFI engine. That thing looks like a motherfucking awesome engine. And I saw one very similar to this. It looks a bit, actually looks very big in comparison to this. I feel like it comes out about this far. And it had bigger pipes and stuff on it and look harder to work on. And the way you pick this up is from number one lift point and number two, and that's your balancing points for pulling the engine out of the car. Now it's had a lot of work done to it. You can see this oil alongside the engine here. I've never taken the rocker cover off the car, so I don't know what it looks like under there. I've got a new plastic piece. I don't know where it is anymore. It's at the back of the motor, I believe. Uh, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Well, here's a part of it. I haven't replaced that one yet, which I should have. And... That hose potentially comes off of there. So that must be how that came off, maybe. But that's, uh... <laughs> this is a beautiful engine to me. I like it, it needs a lot of work. If I rebuild this engine, I'll be proud of it, because it'll be like a brand new engine. It's got oil leaks that are still look like they're leaking. Still got oil in it. It's got the ignition coil right there. I took that off, I could put it on another car if I really wanted to, but um, it's easy to access all the stuff on this car. And as you can tell, the engine's actually not m properly mounted in the car anymore, because the engine was going to come out, and it's already been out once or twice, or more. And as you can see, there's the flywheel, there's a piece of steel protecting the flywheel from colliding with the transmission. The engine went back in the car for various reasons. And I'm not going to go too much details, but it doesn't look like the rats have been on top of the motor at all. It looks good. There's a bit of rust on top of it. That's aluminium castings. And, yeah. Oh, my God. I must be unhealthy or something. Or maybe I'm having a heart attack and I don't know it yet. But this is from talking a lot and trying to get this all out of the way and done with. Now, uh, I don't know what I've broken before. There's a plastic thing I broke. I don't see it anymore, but I know from working on this, the, the main reason I had problems with this motor is when I went to try and start it, I had problems over here, and it wouldn't start. There was a fuel problem, and I couldn't figure out what it was, and it ended up being the fuel tank, uh, the fuel pump in the tank. So that's, uh, <laughs> looking at all these wires, it's a lot of work to put this all back together again. But anyway, the fuel pump was clogged up with rubber, and that was what was wrong with the car, why I couldn't start it at the end. Uh, I, I want you to take a moment to admire what you can see. I learnt from mistakes when I was younger because what I did when I was younger was actually uh, made up individual gaskets for each of these um, pipes because they were hard to put together because they didn't have one individual piece. And so what I did was I made all these little individual pieces, not entire gaskets, and put them there individually rather than having whole ones which I could easily just buy a whole one and just whack it on there. It's a lot cheaper and easier than doing it the way I did it. But it was a learning experience and I got a little bit of experience out of that. It was very, very hard. But in the end, it looks okay. It worked. And I used the original wooden gasket or you know, whatever gasket it is. So this gasket here is damaged and in bad condition and that needs to be replaced, I believe. 
and yet I put it back on there, so that's a bad idea. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I haven't looked inside this engine for a while. It's dry, there's no oil at the top of the engine, so it does need a rebuild. This seal needs replacing because it looks a bit worn out and tired. And it, will, it looks a bit like it's hard. That's, it feels nice to have a piece of this in my hand right now. There's not really any oil in the top. It's actually very gunked up. Like I can see the gunk in that little tube there. Look at that little gunk. Like this engine could have been on the way of failing a long time ago. Or maybe it was already just starting to back then. I don't know. I'd have to take the rocket cover off of this to have a look at it because of curiosity but anyway guys I can't afford to work on this unless I had some sort of way of supporting myself to do it and one of the main objectives of restoring this car would be first of all maybe to get it running but that's not going to happen since it's disconnected from the uh, tranny not to mention there's a lot of work to put this all back together so I think the first steps will be I'll pull the engine out if I was to do anything, and I'd have someone my bench test the engine, see if it's going to work or not. And I'd flood the engine with oil to get the oil through the system, maybe clean, take the rock cover off and check under the cover before it starts up, and see what happens from there. Other than that, I, I really want to talk to you guys later, and not now, because I'm not feeling too good right now talking, because I'm feeling very tired and feeling very yucky. And I, I don't think I'm going to have a heart attack. I just feel like it's been talking too much. And I've been trying to do this every freaking couple of minutes. Now, look at that oil filter. It's at the bottom there. And there's your oil, uh, tranny lines with oil in, oil in the bag. I don't know if you can see it because the lighting ruins everything. That tranny fluid right there. That's tranny fluid. Oh, my God. It's, it's just hilarious to look at some of this stuff. And want to... I really want to work on this, but... Man... It's just too much, like, think about it. If I want to work on this car, what I really want to do to work on this car is I want a comfortable environment. I don't want to work around here outside and annoy my brother who sleeps in that room. I don't want to annoy my mum who kept giving me crap about it. And that's one of the actual main reasons why I stopped working on this car, because she gave me too much crap. I couldn't grind any more. And this was the last piece I worked on in this car before I packed up and stopped working on it. But there's a bunch of other things as well, and while we're talking, I'm going to pack it up, put the engine to bed, to rest, whatever you want to call it. And, yeah. So, I can't work on this car because it upset too many people. So, my intention is to work on this particular car. I want a workshop. I want my own tools. I want a lot of stuff. I potentially want to have a lot of money so that I can hire people to work on this car. And just, you know, get help from them and pay them wages to do work this car and look original again. I want this to be original and unique because it's, to me, it is a beautiful car and I really want to drive this car one day. I want to I want to live the dream again. I want this thing to be like brand new. I want to take it for a drive in the Adelaide Hills and enjoy one last ride to my and Pops property and back. It's one of my dreams about this particular vehicle. And that's just to get a part of me back. I'm feeling good in some ways about it. I'm crying inside and almost feel like doing it externally because I have to pack it away now. And it's it's been a lot of memories. You know, it's a really a darn shame that I can't do nothing with it until I have the financial funding to do anything. And it's probably best I put it away and not um, make the bank run dry because if I do that then I'll be in trouble because then I can't fix my other car and I need that to drive around in so my dream car has to wait many many years before I can uh, drive it again and this it's just gonna cost too much to restore and while I might want to buy another one this is unique to me I will drive another one, but I want to restore this one because it just has unique memories that I want to keep. I'd drive the other one, I'd look after it, I'd do what I can, but 
even still I couldn't afford to buy another one and it would have to be in really good condition I'd have to have basically new rubbers on it for me to be able to keep it and maintain it it'd have to be a nice good clean history of the car it'd have to be something that if you know the doors break I can easily fix them if there's dings in it you know it's it, I don't want a ding in a car I would really hate that I'd try to repair it but I might fail I'd want nice neat mags like that. If it came down to it, I'd take these ones off temporarily, put them on the other one to make me feel a bit better. Like a piece of this comes with me every time I drive it, but then I'm running the risk that I'll never see these mags back on this car ever again. But there's so many things I consider. But the good thing is, this could be the best thing I could say about this car, and I really hate to freaking say it, it's making me feel even worse. This is really only good for parts. That's all this car is good for. And it's, it's a darn shame, really, because, you know, it's something I really want. It's something I really want to restore and repair. And I've done a lot of work so far, and I don't want to give up. But when you look at the right perspective of what you can and can't afford, it's best to part the car. I'm not going to do it, but it is best. Because it will cost you less to part the car, get another one with a better body, and put it all together. But... I really want this car, it means too much to me, and I feel like I'm way too stubborn, but it's how I feel, and I, I feel like people should respect how I feel, and not to mention it's a good learning experience, that's a good angle to look at this from as well, this is for me a learning experience that I've been learning for many, many years, and if I worked on this car again, maybe I'll gain my skills back, but I have to have an open mind to everything on this car not just one thing at a time because of this car I wanted to go to the MTA and I got 102 points out of the maximum possible of like 120, 140 whatever the points were and I feel like it did really well because I could do the maximum uh, I could do anything in automotive I could do auto electrician I could do mechanics engineering in this stuff I could do anything to the car but if I got less than 100 points, they wouldn't teach me to be an auto electrician, which is probably the one worst thing that I couldn't do. Because the reason I couldn't do it is because I wouldn't have the level of points, enough points to do it. And now I've got my points, I could do it. So, guys, I'll talk to you later for a fifth video, maybe, about the car. We won't be looking at it, unfortunately, but you get to see it maybe I should think about pulling it out again but here's the thing that I want to say if I was to work on this car my ideal workshop would be where I have at least two meters of space either side of the car whether it's the rear the sides like not just here but out to here and the reason being is if I want to put a workbench here I can put a workbench there if I want to remove a panel I have enough room to walk it somewhere that I need to put it and not get it damaged and maybe maybe even a 2.5 would be better because some of these panels are really big but it's most of the heavy ones that I'm worried about my ideal workshop would have the funding to make tools up say if I want to take the door off and it's very heavy I could clamp it up here nice and gently and softly without damaging anything and I'd be able to undo those bolts and I'd be able to wheel it around the workshop somewhere safely and not get it damaged. My ideal workshop would have benches with tools laid out and maybe even little cabinets with particular sorts of tools for certain tasks like for removing components, not body panels, but for removing parts like the um, panel here, I'd have a bunch of sockets and stuff for any part of the car so like my Stanley 101 201 piece like I'm going to try to edit these videos it's going to take me a while but um, my Stanley 201 piece in my car I'll show you another kit because we have two of them and there's the hood to this car and it's friggin destroyed like buggery it needs a bit of repairing but it should be okay but a kit I'd want every mechanic to have a kit like this in the workshop where they could get any tool they need and be able to use it whenever they need it instead of having to rely on everyone else for stuff. And this is my toolbox I'm building by the way and I got the idea for that from my car. Falcon XW, Dad's car, it's been sitting there for a long time. 
just like the Fairlane has, but less time has the Fairlane been sitting doing nothing. That car's been sitting doing nothing for a longer time, but it started getting something done to it at least. The Fairlane, to me, is the car I want. The Falcon is my dad's car, and he wants that, and I want my dad to have his dream just like I want to have my dream. Now, I did spot lots of defects that I could say I'd modify it, because if water gets in here, there's nowhere for water to drain down in this corner here. It'll just sit there and rust it out. So have a good look. There is some holes, but not for all the water to get out. And dirt will sit in there, it's very hard to clean. So, what I really want to do is I want to pack this up now. I want to have a break from this. And I want to talk later, you guys, on what you think. Maybe even actually talk to you over Skype or Facebook or something. Just to talk to you guys and make a video of you guys on what you think I should do with this car. How I should go about things. Like, I should part this car and get another one. Honestly, a lot of people will agree on me with that. That's what everyone suggested anyway. Cobra Gold Line. That's um, aftermarket, I think. Um... Security, I'm not sure. Actually, no, I don't think it is. I think that's original. The doors had these green lights that went on. So, um, let me let me just uh, show you the driver's door. It has, a, like, a plastic that's like nylon. And it's where the key goes. And when you put the key in the hole, this thing lights up. So that little white thing there lights up green. And this is such a cool car to me. It, it's just awesome. I really want this car. That's... It's just too much. It just costs too much. It's a, it's a shame. It's like having a Ferrari or something. That costs a lot of money too. That's my Ferrari to you guys. That's what I want. And there's so many reasons why. Such a common body these days, but it's, it's time to say thank you for watching, everyone. I really appreciate you watching my video. I appreciate support, I appreciate it if you like, comment, subscribe, I appreciate it if you share with people and make, tell me what I should do with this, tell me what I should do in future videos and what not because I do want to fix this but it's going to take too much that I can't afford. I have a car, I need to keep it running, if I don't keep it running then I won't have a chance to get to work, come home, and be able to afford to pay for that when I do get a job. I won't have the tool to drive to my nana and pops and visit them and say hello and get to see them every now and then. I see this car every day. It just pains me that I can't do nothing. If I could do something, I would, but, you know, it's too much work. I need money for materials if I was to try and learn to reupholster myself. But it's time for me to let you go. It's gone over my 20-minute period by three minutes. Thank you for watching and goodbye.